Hi, welcome to WEF Tech Now. My name is Travis Loop with the Water Environment Federation. Very happy to be here with Kaushal Trivedi from Teledyne Esco, your business development manager. Very excited for this conversation today. Thank you for inviting me, Travis. One of the big topics these days uh, with coronavirus is wastewater-based epidemiology. It's really been in the news a lot. What, what is wastewater-based epidemiology? So it is called as WBE, and uh, WBE basically postulates that uh, it assumes that you know by doing the wastewater analysis, you will be able to find the infectious disease. And since you are doing on a wastewater basis, so you can find the disease spread over the community level. Mm. And uh, then with that information, you can take some preventive actions and uh, can to the control as well as you know uh, control measure you can implement that. Mm. So it's a kind of a complementary tool to other surveillance uh, methods, uh, WBE. Mm. And, you know, there's the epidemiology piece of it, you know, looking, doing that science, but there's the actual surveillance, sur surveying the wastewater. What, what is that piece if you're, if you're talking about how that works? So it is basically, let me give you an example with a recent COVID case that in, in, if the patient is get infected with COVID, it start, they start showing the symptoms after three, four days. And after that, they go for a clinical test. Clinical test takes results one or two more days. So you lost already six, seven days by the time that person is infected. Whereas with the WBE, uh, if the person is infected, the virus gets sheds into the stool and end up in a wastewater. So by doing the analysis of that wastewater, you can find that information at least seven to eight days prior to you, what you find it in a clinical test. This advanced information is very critical because then you can stop the spread. Because during this period of the clinical test, that person unknowingly still moving in the, con uh, in the community and uh, spreading the virus. He doesn't know that. He or she doesn't know that. So by doing early information is very helpful. Uh, in uh, taking the control measure, uh, implementing some of the you know uh, mask mandate and uh, social distancing and that kind of thing. So it helps in the decision. It also helps in uh, basically if you see that uh, you can prepare your health uh, healthcare system because if you have that knowledge in advance, you can uh, uh, assign more beds or assign more staff. So all these things really help in case. sure yeah. So how do you set up that wastewater surveillance? If you're going to do this WBE, you've got to, you've got to set up the logistics, set up the operation here. How do you do that? So uh, very good point. And there are two major components. Uh, is one is the collection of the sample and other is the analysis of the sample. So the collection of the samples are you know, you know, in the field. So there are two different ways that just now people have uh, using. One is a person go in the field and grab the sample manually. It is called as a grab sample. Uh, but the downside is that over a period, lesson learned, uh, that it is not accurate because there is a human error involved. Somebody grabbed the sample from the top of the wastewater channel. Somebody grabbed the sample bottom of the channels where a lot of sediments are there. So it is not very accurate. It is not very source representative. So garbage in, garbage out. The analysis is not accurate uh, either. Plus, it is not even hygienic. Sometimes, if proper take, uh, care is not taken, you may come in contact with the with the wastewater. So it is not hygienic. Also, contrary to the uh, automatic samplers are uh, established that it is the best method because uh, it is very accurate. Uh, very source representative and hygienic. It, they never come in contact uh, contact with the liquid. And with the uh, automatic sampler, you can do based on time or based on flow. So that's an added advantage you get with the uh, automatic sampler. So that's the sampler collection part. Then once uh, samples are collected, then it, they are sent to the lab and uh, labs are if on the facility like treatment plant or university, then it's uh, easy to transport, but sometimes labs are in different states. So most of those labs are sending the mailing kits to the mm -hmm. user, 
with the dry eyes and dry eyes because the uh, the temperature high temperature or the sunlight does not affect the virus concentration once samples uh, reach to the uh, lab then it's getting a uh, higher concentration it has been created different methods are again used magnetic or centrifuge or different methods are used and then uh, depending on the lab they use uh, either qpcr uh, method or di uh, digital pcr methods all these methods are far you know by far very accurate and very reliable they differ mainly on on the time so some take six uh, two to three days some takes one to two days okay if you're going to set up uh, an ongoing uh, you know testing of, of wastewater for this what are some of the considerations there? How do you set that up to be part of your regular operations? What are some of the best practices in doing this? That will depend on, uh, or actually, that is mainly based on the, the purpose hmm. and the location. And actually, purpose lead to the location. Uh, but basically, purpose is because if you are in the beginning of the uh, outbreak or at the end of the outbreak, tail end, you would like to find the virus presence, mm -hmm. whether it is started or how, what are my control measures we have taken. Whether, so you try to find the virus presence. But if you are in already in outbreak where virus is everywhere throughout the city, I think you are trying to find the trend. So there are two mm -hmm. purposes, a trend in the sense whether it is going up or down. Uh, so two purposes, either you're trying to find uh, the prevalence of the virus or finding the trend. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are trying to find uh, the trend, I think the treatment plant location is pretty good. Mm. Uh, the reason is it uh, the wastewater coming to the treatment plant comes from multiple neighborhoods and commercial facilities and industries. So it represents the community or the citywide uh, picture. And most the good part is most of the treatment plant have the automatic sampler already in their effluent. And so they are doing uh, 24 hours sampling anyway for many other analyses that it can, they can be used to take the same sample. They don't have to buy any extra sampler and they can, they can use it for the same. So 24 hours uh, permanent AC power, permanent refrigerated sampler is good and treatment plant is a good location. Now, if you are trying to find the prevalence, it is better to go close to the source. Mm. What I mean by close to the source is uh, going to close to the community or neighborhood outlet or building outlet, dorm or nursing home or uh, correction facility. And uh, you, at that point, you use a portable refrigerator sampler because it is not on premises, it is in remote location. So you use a portable uh, sampler there. And uh, in those areas, generally flow varies with it during the day. Uh, in the morning, everybody uses the toilet, so flow is very high. So you better take the sam more samples at that time rather than in the afternoon where there are few people are using the toilets. Mm -hmm. So flow proportional sampling, portable samplers, uh, they are good. And since it is uh, remote locations, twice a week is a good frequency. Mm. Now, I will also say that, you know, if you, you would like to control many locations or you want to do the sampling at many locations, like some cities have 40, 50 nursing homes and they want to do it. At that time, it's a portable refrigerated sampler. It's a refrigeration unit is on the portable sampler. It's a pretty good device because then person can go from one location to another location and you should use the 24 bottles or multi bottles so that each location, the you know sampler uh, will collect the sample in individual bottle, depending on the location. Mm -hmm. The person has to just uh, uh, you know uh, drop the okay. suction line, press the button on the sampler, samples get uh, preset volume, sample get collected, move on, pack up to the next site. Mm -hmm. And good thing is since refrigeration is built onto that, you don't have to worry about this temperatures effect or sunlight effect. So mm -hmm. that's the uh, recommended practice. Yeah. A lot of considerations here with this. It's not completely simple, a lot to figure out. Are there any uh, examples you know, from the real world uh, that, that you've been involved with or Teledynesco has been involved with to, to point to of how this has been used successfully? You know, there are many examples last year because of a lot of people, this awareness came. But my favorite one, I'll tell you. Uh, one of the university in uh, Arizona Mm -hmm. uh, they before the you know after the break uh, before students started coming in they implemented this WBE surveillance 
and they, they implemented and they picked up the location around the campus uh, and all the dorms. And they were doing regularly uh, the surveillance. And one day, the, they found a virus in uh, outlet, the samples collected at the outlet of the dorm. Mm. And they quickly did the clinical test to that dorm, all the students in that dorm. And they narrowed down the infection to the couple students. Mm. And they quarantined them. But think about it. So, you know, if they would not have done that, they had to close the campus, or the spray, you know, would have been uh, throughout the campus. All the student activity, activities would have been compromised. A lot of things have happened. So that's a very good part that, you know, they could quickly implement and, you know, implement in a, in a very uh, smaller segment. And think about parents. I have a young kid. Uh, so think about uh, parents. You know, they feel more comfortable with if the universities are taking these proactive ex actions, parents are comfortable sending kids to the school. Yeah. So that is my fav one of the favorite examples. <laughs> that's, that's a very good example. Um, obviously, this wastewater-based epidemiology is, is very uh, popular right now because of coronavirus. Uh, are there other applications? You know, why is it a valuable practice beyond just COVID? So WBE is not actually new. Uh, even uh, during the uh, polio outbreak, the WBE was used. Mm. It become, uh, it came to limelight because of the COVID and the spread across the globe. That's why it became in a limelight. So, but it's a not, it's a not the new one. Uh, and you know, the good part is that WBE provides an advanced information, but. Basically, what we know uh, that COVID was there, and we know about three, four variants, right? Mm. Uh, China variants and uh, Delta variants and, uh, you know, the UK variants and this kind of three, four variants. But there are much more, many more variants were there. Research have found that many more variants are there. Mm. They did not come into news because they were either short-lived or in a local area. Mm. But they found many more through a WBE. So it's because virus mutates quite a bit. So that's why they, with the WBE, not just for COVID, but you can find more variants also. And besides COVID, uh, the WBE also uh, is very useful in the city of uh, uh, Cary in North Carolina, uh, LA. They have used for uh, substance orders. Mm. So by, with the WBE, they could find out neighborhood base that here there is a substance over. So it's beyond COVID, the WBE is used at many places. Sure. Well, science and technology and the field of public health are always evolving, always changing very rapidly. Where do you see wastewater-based epidemiology going in the next five to 10 years? That's a good question because, you know, uh, WBE is, as I said, it was there, but it has become very popular and I see that it's gonna continue uh, uh, it will be continued to use uh, in in a future years. Uh, the the you know think about it that uh, I was reading last year uh, articles from the WHO, and they said since 1970 there are 1,500 1,500 new pathogens were detected, mm. and 40 infectious diseases in 50 years. And last 20 years, if you see, uh, the bigger, uh, big outbreak was there. You know, uh, Zika virus, Ebola virus, swine flu, uh, now uh, dengue, and now the COVID. You know, so in last 20 years. So why it is happening? Because of the climate change, because of the uh, unprecedented uh, population growth and uh, resistance to antimicrobial. Mm. You know, that's what it is happening and that's why it is, we are, we, we, we are becoming more and more vulnerable. What I mean is that, you know, and WHO in 2019 uh, report, they have also recognized 10 biggest threat and out of uh, 10, the four are all infectious disease. Mm. So this is not gonna go away. And the good part is that with this WBE, you are able to find information in advance, as I earlier said. And because of that, you can take enough control measure to prevent uh, or, you know, kind of stuff. Sure. So that's a very helpful. Nobody, uh, COVID has uh, taught us a lesson. 
and no country would like to have mm -hmm. this kind of situation in future. Mm -hmm. So the, I think WBE is the tool to move forward. Well, Kashul, thank you very much for the information. Very, very helpful. Uh, and I'm sure folks have learned a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity.